Shoreline Maintenance. We're a family-owned business with over 20 years of experience. Our goal is to customize each dock to the customer's needs at the best price on the lake. We service Blunt County, Knox County, Loudoun, and Monroe. Driving piles, turnkey docks, boat and jet ski lifts, riprap, walkways and stairs, electricity, resurfacing docks, total reconstruction. Our docks are constructed in the highest quality in pre-treated materials from the piles to the lifts on turnkey dock. Call my daddy or papa today. Call Shoreline Maintenance today, 865-206-7907, 865-206-7907. Oh, if you guys like to travel, then hop in your car and head on over to Greenback, Tennessee and go travel back in time. The Greenback Diner has been around for almost a 100 years with the best sweet tea around. Don't forget the grilled honey bun topped with ice cream and chocolate syrup. They have some friendly service and a family atmosphere. Thursday suppers are from 5 till 8. Breakfast is served from 7.30 until 10.30. Lunch is 10.30 until 2. And on Saturdays, you can stuff yourself on all-you-can-eat breakfast bar from 7.30 until 11. They have the best burgers and best fillies in town. Call them now. Make sure they're there for you no matter where you're coming from. 865 865- 856-2614 that's 865-856-2614 or find the Greenback Diner on Facebook We've been catering to it and figuring it out since 1972. So join us at obnoxiousbehavior.com. The merchandise from all of the talent on our shows and the guests on our shows and all of the stuff from our sponsors, from Spoons and Shakers, the Americana Sunday Cafe, as well right here on Taz the Podcast. We've been catering to it and figuring it out since 1972. All you have to do is click Obnoxious Behavior and fill your obnoxious behaviors. You're down with the OXB. Have you heard? Heard what? Comedy Couple Tees will print anything on a shirt. Anything? Anything. What if I can't think of something funny to put on a shirt? That's okay. They have lots of funny shirts on their website to choose from, or you can create your own custom shirt. You can also get a custom mask, phone case, mouse pad, and so much more. I bet it's expensive though, right? No way. You can get a full color picture printed on a white shirt for only $20. 20 bucks? Yep, they have great prices. Where can I find them? ComedyCoupleTees.com. That's ComedyCoupleTees.com. Comedy Couple Tees. We print anything on a shirt. Hi, I'm Jennifer Jones, creator of Twisty Knot, the little fashion accessory that easily creates the perfect knot in your t-shirts. Check out my podcast episode with Taz from season one to hear my story about how I invented and patented my product. And please visit twistyknot.com to see easy tutorials of all the ways that you can use Twisty Knot. That's twist dash t double e knot dot com. Use code podcast and get 10% off your order. What's up, guys? It's John O'Clayton, and I'm here on the Taz Podcast. We down here on Teleco Lake. Taz the Podcast, a weekly feature of those that entertain, make us laugh, and make us feel for a better life. Live from the studio on the bougie bus, somewhere on the side of the road in America. He is the Fruit Loop in a bowl of Cheerios. He is the guy that makes life happen. Taz Cable is Taz the Podcast. Hey, everybody. Season five. We're off and running right here on Taz the Podcast. We're so glad that you guys are back for a really good season. I can't wait. Making it happen in Greenback, Tennessee today. Give it up for Greenback. Come on, y'all. They know nobody here. Yeah, there we go. There we go. You know, um, back coming back with season two, I'm pretty excited about it. We have a lot of artists coming up focusing on Tennessee this year. Um, I wonder why. It could be because the obnoxious behavior studios have moved back to Big Gully, Tennessee. We're producing uh, three different podcasts. Podcast, spoons and shakers. We're also uh, putting some really um, familiar faces around the Taz FM and Taz, the podcast brand. Mike and Maggie McKinney from the Panhandle. Listen, I tell y'all, I don't miss Florida. Y'all down there, y'all crazy, crazy. <laughs> But I like it here. I know. I like it there too when it's cold and snowy here. But you know, bringing you guys back with Americana Cafe Sunday. Oh wait, I screw it up every time. But uh, Americana Cafe Sundays. 
Thank you. Okay, but you know, in, you know, in the obnoxious behavior ad at the beginning of the show, I changed it, right? You know, I always do. Yeah. So, see, I know that. you didn't well, proof it for that's me. That's the obnoxious part of it. <laughs> Catering to it and figuring it out, babe. What's Lucky Mud uh, got coming up for us in August on the big Redwood stage you have down there? Well, you know, we we do we think we have incredible radio shows every week, every Sunday. So we. Um, and we love all of our artists. So we, of course, have another spectacular show. We call it Forces of Nature. And uh, it's just got some of our favorite artists on it. Eric Taylor starts it off. We lost Eric last year, but boy, what an amazing talent. He's from Georgia, but he's a Texas legend. And then we have the new 76ers, the Currys, an amazing band, Sally Spring and Ted Lyons. Brian Smalley, Rebecca Pulley, and Grant Peoples on this one show. Yeah, it's, wow. it's, it's really a great show. Yeah, it, and, it, you know, go ahead. I was just going to say, Michael is really great at making the the music flow. So um, we just have a great time putting these things together. And Mike's voice uh, is like butter, man. Like you, you like <laughs> Mike's voice on your show, man. Like the, his voice is like butter, and the way you guys put uh, these collaborations together and uh, and putting these radio shows out, you know, you're definitely um, your radio show, your podcast here with us is definitely one of those you can start at episode one and listen all the way through to where are you at now, eighteen or nineteen. Yeah, think we're up to 20. Yeah, build that campfire, turn on um, the Americana Cafe Sundays, and hang out with my friends Mike and Maggie from Lucky Mud. Mike and Maggie, thanks from Georgia. You're way out west right now, aren't you? And we're headed to Montana. Meet in me August. in Montana. Hey, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys for, uh, thank you guys for stopping out, uh, stopping by here, and I appreciate you all for everything you do, done, and will do in the future. Hey, you know what? I just, I'm just eager to get stuff. <laughs> ah, I love it. I love it. Thank you guys, Mike and Maggie McKinney. Thank you guys very much. Lucky Mud, join them coming up on their show, uh, Americana Sunday Cafe. And you know, speaking of joining people and good music, King's Family Distillery is my presenting sponsor for the Gatlinburg Songwriters Festival coming up on August the 19th through the 22nd. I hope that somehow, some way, you meet me there. We'll be right back. Shoreline Maintenance, we're a family-owned business with over 20 years of experience. Our goal is to customize each dock to the customer's needs at the best price on the lake. We service Blunt County, Knox County, Loudoun, and Monroe. Driving piles, turnkey docks, boat and jet ski lifts, riprap, walkways and stairs, electricity, resurfacing docks, total reconstruction. Our docks are constructed in the highest quality in pre-treated materials from the piles to the lifts on turnkey dock. Call my daddy or today. Call Shoreline Maintenance today. 865-206-7907. 865-206-7907. Oh, if you guys like to travel, then hop in your car and head on over to Greenback, Tennessee and go travel back in time. The Greenback Diner has been around for almost a 100 years with the best sweet tea around. Don't forget the grilled honey bun topped with ice cream and chocolate syrup. They have some friendly service and a family atmosphere. Thursday suppers are from 5 till 8. Breakfast is served from 7.30 until 10.30. Lunch is 10.30 until 2. And on Saturdays, you can stuff yourself on all-you-can-eat breakfast bar from 7.30 until 11. They have the best burgers and best fillies in town. Call them now. Make sure they're there for you no matter where you're coming from. 865 865- 856-2614 that's 865-856-2614 or find the Greenback Diner on Facebook We've been catering to it and figuring it out since 1972. So join us at obnoxiousbehavior.com. The merchandise from all of the talent on our shows and the guests on our shows and all of the stuff from our sponsors, from Spoons and Shakers, the Americana Sunday Cafe, as well right here on Taz the Podcast. We've been catering to it and figuring it out since 1972. All you have to do is click Obnoxious Behavior com and fill your obnoxious behaviors. You're down with the OXB. Have you heard? Heard what? Comedy Couple Tees will print anything on a shirt. Anything? 
anything. What if I can't think of something funny to put on a shirt? That's okay. They have lots of funny shirts on their website to choose from, or you can create your own custom shirt. You can also get a custom mask, phone case, mouse pad, and so much more. I bet it's expensive, though, right? No way. You can get a full-color picture printed on a white shirt for only $20. 20 bucks? Yep, they have great prices. Where can I find them? ComedyCoupleTees.com. That's ComedyCoupleTees.com. Comedy Couple Tees. We print anything on a shirt. Hi, I'm Jennifer Jones, creator of Twisty Knot, the little fashion accessory that easily creates the perfect knot in your t-shirts. Check out my podcast episode with Taz from season one to hear my story about how I invented and patented my product. And please visit twistyknot.com to see easy tutorials of all the ways that you can use Twisty Knot. That's twist dash t double e knot dot com. Use code podcast and get 10% off your order. Taz the Podcast. Well, well, well. What's it like to be on Teleco Lake with John O'Clayton? I don't know. We're about to find out. What's up, John O? What's up, man? Yeah, welcome to uh, Taz the Podcast. It's good to finally get you on. Yeah, absolutely. We, uh, I'm glad to make it happen and especially in the backyard over here. So yeah, I know it's pretty cool that we, uh, we get to work it out to where we get to hang out with some of the people that we know. We're pretty appreciative to be right here on this beautiful Teleco Lake. I grew up right here on this lake. John, are you from here originally? Are you from this area? Yeah, about, probably about six minutes up the road, actually. Yeah. Um, What, what, what are you, what community are you from? I'm from, I went to elementary school at Lanier. Yeah. And, uh, middle school at Carpenters. Yeah. Went to high school at Greenbacks. No, no. You, my... Oh, you're a traitor. You went from the county yeah. to the city. I was bouncing. I was bouncing but, a little bit. But I think Greenback's probably the only city school in the State of the Union that's still an urban, uh, like, not city school. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's but, a sports. Yeah. Oh, it, well, but listen, you, when you were in school there, like, one thing I always, at growing up here, like, one thing I knew about Greenback is, like, if it was time to bail hay, you didn't go to school, you went and bailed hay and hauled hay. You did. I mean, it was, you got out of school too, but you made a little cash. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, that was the, um, I mean, that was the thing with Greenback Coast because, you know, because it's a big farming community. It's always been like that. Absolutely. Did, that's, that's did your home. family farm? Did they farm? We did a little farming. We, uh, we mainly just planted a garden. We're big on garden, no. garden growing and stuff. Um, if you live around here, you better be big on the garden. Yeah. So do you, let me ask you, when you started, um, when, when, uh, being from here, I know, like, it was, I always thought I was going to be like, uh, you know, like, uh, Elton John or Whitney Houston or something, because I thought, you know, because I sang in the church choir, I thought, you know, I was going to go far just because the preacher said I could say, I mean, I was going somewhere. <laughs> when did you, um, what was it like? How did you first realize that you wanted to do, um, singing, songwriting, um, professionally? I was, well, I say professionally, um, when I realized that people was watching me and they were appreciating the songs that I wrote and they, they thought it was awesome. It was a different kind of feeling just being up on a stage and it, it happened at my, my brother's benefit back in the day. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that was a special thing when you, when you see people that take your music in and it was songs that I'd sit in my bedroom and just wrote, you know, yeah. I didn't know, I, I don't know if I was writing like, some sad Taylor Swift stuff at the time. You know, uh, I don't know if anybody thought it was cool because I never really talked about it. And then when I let loose, man, and play, that's when I realized I was like, man, this this is cool. Yeah, you know, this this makes me makes me different, and I and I like it, and I enjoy it. So. Mine was on a trampoline and put and uh, people driving by honking the horn at me, so I thought it was cool. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go far. <laughs> that's right. I did go far. I fell the hell off of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, didn't work out very well for me. So, when was your first? Um, wait, wait. Did you think at that point? Did you think you were just going to be a songwriter? Did you? Um, did you? You know, wh- which direction at that point did you want to go with your career? Were you? Um, was it songwriting or was it actually performing? It was. It was performing and. Uh, at that point, it was like, man, I'm performing, and I started doing them cover songs. It was fun, you know, and I got some guys that I'm thankful to be able to play with a lot of awesome musicians in the yeah. Maribel area and, yeah. Yeah. and help me out. And it's like, it was crazy. We were playing them cover songs, and I was like, man, I feel like, you know, I feel like the rock star. I watch them on the, you know, the CMAs or something right. like that, some award show. And yeah. uh, I was singing their songs, but with my band, and everybody's like, yeah, you know, they were feeling that too. But uh, 
as I matured, I got to the songwriting aspect of it. You matured? So, like, <laughs> yeah. all right, well, in that the songwriting you aspect, got over, yeah, 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 there's only it. a certain aspect. So we're yeah, no, we're all sitting them. here hurting today after, you know, our immaturities from last night probably, but, you know, that's what makes us who oh, we yeah. are, huh? Yeah, that's what, how it happens. So when was your first, um, your, when is the first time you played to get paid? Um, and I'm not talking about your OnlyFans account. I'm talking about actually getting paid. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. It's a little different. Yeah. Right. Um, I'd say it was, uh, my, my mind goes back to playing Cheyennes. It was called Cheyennes and it was up on 321 right past Blunt Memorial Hospital. And, uh, yeah, it was cool, man. I, I would go in there and the guy that actually taught me, he gave me guitar lessons and I started with my papa and learned some stuff from him. And when I got into, lessons and stuff it was a guy named drew lee choir and uh drew lee choir wow drew, drew lee choir he's uh many he, he put up with me as a little kid helping me you know learn guitar and stuff and i was always about sports and there'd be times i was like man this ain't cool so i wouldn't go to lessons you know and drop out and do stuff like that but uh anyhow yeah he, he'd let me he'd be playing at cheyenne's and i'd get up there and play like five or six songs you know yeah or something and that was like a show to me and he would give me some tip money out of it you know and that was just, that was real cool, man, because I was 11 years old and all, a lot of people would do that. Yeah, so that's, that's really, that's, that's cool. super cool. Well, and, um, what is it about that night, that first time that you were on stage? What is it about that night that you, um, that still probably resonates with you, um, right now? You t- talking about like back in the Cheyenne? Days? Yeah. Like what? I mean, uh, cause you know, cause I, kn- I remember my first time on stage and I remember the first large crowd I was in front of. Now our professions are a little different, mm-hmm. but I remember and I still from this day, I still remember that one thing I told myself or that I learned yep. from that night. What was it for you? It was, uh, it was my friends and family, man. It was like, uh, you look, saw the support. Yeah. I, it was just, it was the support. It was just like, all right, well, I have a reason to do this, you know, not just sit in my back, in my bedroom grounded and stuff playing the guitar and trying to come up with songs or write about some you know girls that broke my heart at school or something like that like everybody thought that was cool yeah you know then it was cool then if i could sing it you know yeah, if yeah, i yeah. told them i was just you know yeah what's yeah. this guy talking about yeah. But, yeah, <laughs> I, was, I get you know, it if i sing it they were like yeah that's it right there so mm-hmm. that's it right there and what is uh the um well for me i rem- you know for me mine was to um i remembered how the uh where you i love being the center of attention but what happened for me, the largest, the largest crowd I've ever been in from what happened to me is it taught me that I should be, that my, I should be more humble in front of the crowd or with the crowd because the crowd will destroy you yeah. if not. So I really, you know, with me and my quick sarcasm, sometimes, you know, you can get beer bottles slung at you, but <laughs> so far I ain't lost my teeth from a beer bottle. That's least for chicken wire. Yeah. yeah chicken yeah. wire mistake. <laughs> when, oh, we used to, I wanted to do a show like that one time to see if we could make like, if I can make people mad in the audience, but anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so for you, when you guys, you, you've been doing this for, I didn't ask how old you were and it doesn't matter, but you've been doing this for actually how long? I'd say 10 years. Seriously. Wow. I'm, like really putting effort into it. Yeah. I'd stop. I took some breaks, I guess you'd say. Yeah. Six, so you, um, six months or so. Well, so for you, now you just recently made a move. In, in, in to a, a pretty big move from from East Tennessee to Middle Tennessee, and that's a place called Nashville. Yeah. What, to, when you here. went when you went there, what did you? What was the reasoning for going there? I mean, I'm working a lot in Nashville right now. I can drive back and forth. But um, what do you? What What did you go for? Uh, just to just to be there to to connect with people, man. Just networking and stuff like that, and take in all the opportunities I can. Because you never know when an opportunity can be somebody that canceled. Yeah. A ride or something. Yeah. They're like, hey man, won't you come over? And I've a, uh, I've been able to do that with some well songwriters that they were, they, they were booked out, you know, and I couldn't, couldn't write with them, but mm-hmm. somebody canceled. I was one of the first ones they called and I was over there to go get a song that ends up turning into something, you know, big or a song that I'm going to cut that's real special to me. So. So are you going to perform over there? Are you going to try to get gigs over there? Are you going to, are you going to try to get some of the stages over there? Are you just going, you just being there during the day, during the week for business and to write and, and yeah. that opportunity? Yeah, I'm going to, um, I do writers rounds and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, quite a bit. Got yeah. some coming up. Got one this Thursday actually at the, uh, the local in Nashville, but doing that one in, uh, yeah, I mean, like playing and stuff like that. I, I definitely want to play with some of my buddies over, you know, some of the broadways and get those experience and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But definitely want to, you know, keep 
keep my shows coming from the the outside where I've been playing and, and traveling, doing different ones. So. Right? How is it being on a on, on a stage that's not your home stage? Because just kind of like me, anything um, north and of Chattanooga till you get to about Johnson City, I kind of know everybody. So, yeah. like, how is it when you get out there um, on, on that stage? Um, how is it different? Is it an uncomfortable for you because you don't know Aunt Granny, Uncle Bob? Ain't Uncle Mary's not sitting out there like, yeah. you know, is it different for you? I think it's, is it the same? I, it's different, but it's just, uh, it's a good, it's a good different. You know, mm-hmm. this is a new person that hasn't, that I have something I can show them right. at one point in time. Those people told me like, oh yeah, that's it, you know, and I still go to my family for advice of song, you know, like, hey, what do you guys think about this song? You know, blah, blah, blah. They're going to be the first ones, you know, and my close friends. And then, uh, but this new person, then I'll play them that song, and I want to see their, their reaction. It's so cool to me to, yeah. to do that. Uh, so um, you, you've been – have you gotten – are you getting a lot of writing done, or are you, are you accomplishing a lot since you've been out? You've been out there since about as long as I've been here, about a month, month and a half, right? No, I've been – I moved last year. Uh, oh, you did move yeah, last it, year. It was, uh, it was this year uh, – This, I guess, yeah, almost a year and – in August. I See, I gotta, I gotta read more than the headlines because I make fun of people because they read the headlines and form their opinion and you probably shared a memory or something on social media and I caught it as you just went the other day. Oh, so no, you no, I, uh, I got a new place, uh, with one of my buddies over there. Oh, so, yeah, okay. We, so yeah, I wasn't got... like, I'm, I didn't like get like, really? Oh, yeah, and just yeah, like, no. okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> right. no, you're good you're okay, good. good. Um, so how's it going well? Like you're, you're making some good connections and yeah. stuff out there? Oh, yeah, man. It's, it's going good. I've, uh, I've been blessed with opportunities. I've, I've actually wrote, going through my Dropbox and stuff, uh, I've, I'm almost to a hundred songs in a year. It's kind of crazy because I didn't get a Dropbox until I moved to Nashville. Yeah. Uh, didn't know what that was, you know, you kinda, that's, yeah. that's where you say work tapes and stuff like that. <laughs> uh, so I was going back through it and started Count Man and, uh, up to like 80 songs and it's just, it's kind of crazy because you wonder sometimes what, you know, what, what are all these songs going to come to? You know, right. what are the, yeah. uh, are all of them going to, you know, are they going to make it for me or something like that? You know, it, th- thoughts go through your head, but, but the thing is, it's almost just like a, like an armory thing, I mm-hmm. guess you'd say. Like, mm-hmm. I got this many in the, in the tank that I feel comfortable with because it's, it's real stuff, you know, not all those 80s am I really like, you know, want to put out and right. stuff like that yeah. or anything. But yeah. there's a good 40, good half of those, you know, so I feel strong, comfortable about that and just keep on writing, man, because I just keep, New stuff comes better each day, each time you do it. Just I, I always ask this for each uh, artist that I have um, on the show, comedians included, is what is your writing process like? Oh, man. I think it's probably, we like probably what it is don't right want now. To know. Yeah. Like I'm sitting over here just looking around at the lake, and I'm just like, man, I'm taking this in. I, I think that's that's a big big thing is just wandering off, but thinking about stuff that, that pe- other people think about, but you put it in a song, and it's just mm-hmm. it's it's wild because, you know, you take – stories you hear over the weekends you buddy dealing with a problem or something like that when mm-hmm. it's the party's going on but you remember that moment in that party you're sitting there talking to your buddy about something that was special between you guys you know and then you take that instance and you go back and then you holler at him a week and you're like listen man i got this song check this out this comes from that idea like what you're talking about i think it'd relate to you know right yeah yeah but yeah that's kind of the thing well and, and you know and i don't think you know i think the only person that i know that has like a strict writing procedure is dolly parton like yeah i mean she i mean she probably like hmm, she probably you know she's got a procedure yeah, yeah she got a procedure oh yeah all right so i think it's uh, i think we've uncovered enough i i, I did kind of um i had some more questions for you but you know what you were early you shut up on time Boom. Hey, yeah so i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm not gonna i'm not gonna put heat on you okay awesome. all right all right when we come back we got jono is gonna jam out just a little bit with us it's more on taz the podcast taz the podcast <laughs> Wow, Jono, we must really be living right to be sitting here on the side of Teleco Lake working our ass off right now. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're working. Yeah, we're working so freaking hard. We're working on hurting. <laughs> no, you are. Listen, I did pretty good. I hydrated, used my herbal life. You know, I did my thing, you know, so I could get up today and perform for you here. Yep. And I hope, I hope you're so impressed. You asked me to sing a song at the end of this. <laughs> no? Not. Okay. So, um, now we've been talking about your songwriting. You went to Nashville and now I think it's time to get down to the nuts and bolts of everything. Um, let's, um, what was one of the first songs that, um, that stuck with you and you recorded it that you wrote? Like, what was that first song for you? Mm. Um, I guess, uh, 
I guess I would have to say the one that I put out uh, a year ago, yeah. almost a year ago, last August. And, yeah, it's called Takes a Lot of Love. Yeah. I, I um, that one, that was... That was a cool one. It was kind of a different, different thing for me. It was, it was kind of, it was wild. Like I'm just, I'm just going to put this thing out and see what people think about it. I had three songs to choose from that I recorded and I liked it more. It was more catchy, you know, coming out of the gates and just putting something out for the first time. Yeah. But uh, now I've got to where I man, I got, I got so many. Yeah. I guess you'd say. Um, Are you bragging or complaining? That, man, I'm. Not complaining. I'm not go. bragging. There you, you go. Know, I'm just thank. Yeah. So thankful let's take let's take these fine people that took time out of their day to 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 listen to us here. Let's take them down your musical journey. What, what you're going to play some songs for us, and let's just talk about them as we go. What's the first song you're going to play? So I think uh, I wrote this one. It was two weeks after I moved to Nashville mm-hmm. a year ago, and it was it was called the Highway, and it was about you know. You're either going to do stuff my way, you know, or it's going to be the highway. You know, you ever heard that saying? Yeah. It's like, it's no, be, listen, dude, you're talking to a gypsy. Yeah. yeah it's like, it's yeah. like, it's my way or the highway. Yeah, I like, leave well, a lot gonna... when I don't get my way. I'm out. <laughs> but I got to thinking about it and I was like, you know, there's a lot of people who have songs about a highway, but there's a highway. You know, Let's hear yours. The highway of the highway. Let's hear your highway song. When I turned 18, daddy couldn't tell me anything. You should have seen his face when he found my green He almost killed me Said if you lived in this house It's my old son and my way Or the highway So I took the highway Driving too fast Put my foot down A little heavy on the gas Passing county line signs Never looking back And part of my Still back home If I'm gonna learn I gotta learn on my own Your daddy always said It had to be his way But I took the highway She said she loved me But I had to choose Between holding her Or the 90 proof And then she said It was her way For the highway so I took the highway, driving too fast, put my foot down, a little heavy on the gas, passing county line sign, never looking back. And part of my heart is still back home, if I'm gonna learn, I gotta learn on my own. She always said it had to be her way, but I took the highway. Turn this truck around, head on back to town, leave my pride behind. I could call up dad, I could try to get a bag, hope to make things right. But I took the highway, driving too fast, put my foot down, a little heavy on the gas, passing county line signs, never ever looking back. And part of my Still back home And I sure learned From being on my own Doing the right things the hard way But I took the easy lane And I took the highway I took the highway I don't know if the about the highway, but boy, with the highway and those birds in the background, that sounded good. I know, right? Yeah, yeah, that was really good. How? Oh, I'm a and you wrote, out here. I know it's beautiful out here. It's God's country. That's it's right. God's country. Look, you better be taking me in some of those pictures. I got it. I mean, listen, I'm the hot one here. Wow, your people, like, your people are ruthless, John. Man, I just taking pictures. I know. Everywhere you Put got face. you. I know, right? They're beautiful, beautiful people. <laughs> beautiful people follow you everywhere. So you, um, that song, um, it was it real? Was it a fight or something that prompted that song for you was it or was it actually it just came to you about you know how oh yeah i like him um or was it actually um you know was it was, was it a fight that did it or was it was it what did that because that just sounded like you were saying like you know piss off well we uh um we wrote a song 
I, I wrote it with Dan Hudson and McCoy Moore. The production crew's getting better yeah, right yeah. here. Go ahead I'm if you like, want to. What's yeah, that? I know, right? The hospitality. The hospitality is great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. But, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be professional here. <laughs> no, I'm, um, I wrote that song with uh, Dan Hudson and McCoy Moore. And uh, two good buddies of mine, and we just we just got in a room, and it was my first that was my first ever song that I wrote on Music Row on Sixteenth Avenue, and uh, it was really cool. We wrote that song, and we did, I mean like we were talking about ideas about you know what to write about, and uh, yeah, we just talked about how me and McCoy we had moved to Nashville around the same time, and we took the highway, but you know we thought about. You know, a lot of people tell you, I've seen a lot of people that that took the highway in my lifetime, Mm -hmm. them as well, they said, but uh, in my lifetime, they took the highway and they did uh, take it as in drinking way and stuff like that. Some went different ways. Oh, good analogy. God, that's a good analogy. Some come come back, you know, um, and some just took the highway way too far. And I guess it was like a, what song are you going to write that's like a balance in between of both of those to... To show like a highway of losing it too far, or like a highway of just. Did you do that? You do you have a song that represents that though? Did Do um, you have a song that represents taking it too far? Taking it too far. Um, I or guess, did I did I, I mean, just take this too far? Like, no, I, no, am I changing your mind? So yeah, that's a that's a good analogy right there. You throwing them back. On that. Yeah. Oh, uh, this is a newer one. This is, I guess, you can you, you can say it's taking it too far. All right. It's a. Uh, I wrote this song, my buddy Blaine Rudd, and it's called The Cold Beer Truth. Oh. I've been thinking, I've been drinking, yet looking for a slow down. I've been wandering, out here running, need to nail these boots to the ground. And here we are on the drive tailgate, and here I go, I'll give you everything. I'm talking one map out, two kids in the yard, little house with a wraparound. I'm talking front porch swing, yeah, my last name. When we die, girl, we heaven bound. It can be northern Alabama, Georgia, and Savannah, baby. You can even name a dogs. Cause after all, I know this only sounds good when we had us a few. That's just a cold beer true. you close when I'm so don't know why I feel that way it takes a six pack then I come right back girl it changes the way I think I'm talking one map die two kids in the yard little house with a wraparound I'm talking front porch swing in my last name when we die girl we heaven bound it can be northern Alabama Georgia and Savannah Baby, you can even name a dose Cause after all, I know this only sounds good when we had us a few That's just a cold bit of truth That's just a cold bit of truth That's just a cold bit true. That's just a cold bit true. I'm talking one map dot, two kids in the yard, little house with a wraparound. I'm talking front porch swing, yeah, my last name. When we die, girl, we're heaven bound. It can be northern Alabama, Georgia, and Savannah. Baby, you can't even name a dog Cause after all, I know this only sounds good when we had us a few Yeah, I know that it only sounds good when we had us a few That's just a cold bit true That's just a cold bit true I think it's just the cold beer truth that I'd like to hear that song with the full band. Oh yeah, it's yeah. good with the full band, man. That, that's crazy. That's you, um, there was something in that song that that reminded me 
of something um, that I wanted to, and maybe it would take us to where our, uh, hey, I already beat you to it, girl, here. And, you know. <laughs> and we ain't even going to edit that out. We That's love that. this hospitality around here. Yeah. yeah. So you, um, let, let's just, um, when you're writing, because you notice, um, today I notice a little bit more, and not that I don't, I've not I've never judged you before, but I see more passion in, in what you're doing today versus maybe when I saw you. Um, ten years ago, or mm. you know, whatever. But even even in some of your stuff on social media, like you're you're really putting it in there today. Like you know, maybe you need to be hung over more often. Like oh, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. But let me ask you: when let's go to um, who was the one? You know, we we as people who do what we do, um, you know, we do tend. You know, we want that support. And we got to have that kind of. Uh-uh. Yeah. Who's the one that? Who's the who's? Who, have you ever written about that person that has been your? Your flame, or the one that has kept you. Um, I know you. You mentioned a, a gentleman earlier that maybe that was a mentor of yours and that kind of thing. But was there someone else that you've written about that that changed you, or, or has continued to mold you and who you are as a musician or as a even as a human being? I would say uh, it'd have to be it'd have to be my brother. I mean, that's that's kind of the only reason I'm really. Not really the only reason. I shouldn't say that, but that's the big reason of why I'm doing what I'm doing and where I'm at. Where I'm at is because, uh, I mean, my brother, he left he left behind a good group of friends that I could surround myself with, you know, growing up. And mm-hmm. uh, one, it was that. But you know, I, I wrote a song when he passed away and stuff, uh, and it was everybody, you know, they loved it right there. It was like, all right, so that's my emotional side that I can tell people you know i felt comfortable saying it through a song you know everybody know how i felt they probably wondered how i felt all the time you know i was just a kid running around like yeah sad about what happened and you know the process and stuff but it was just you know if i do this with a song and they listen to my song and then they understand where i'm coming from you know because i didn't just sit there and tell them and you know show i show my emotional side and grieve with my mom you know i didn't didn't do it like that but the song what was it about that song? Was it the um, was it the was it was it a celebration or was it grief that you were writing from? It was just a, it was a grief. It wasn't like a get down in the dumps kind of thing, but it was just like a I'm doing it for you, you know. And I can't. Even, it sounds crazy. I mean, probably bad, but I don't I don't fully remember all of the song. I'd say right now, uh, or I'd play it, but the, the title of it I'll never forget. It's called For You. you know? Yeah, and that was so I'm. I'm doing that, you know, that's kind of why I'm doing this, and I'm doing it for my mom, you know, my mom's uh, put everything, everything into uh, getting me to where I'm at, she had to, she was dad and mom, you know, Mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, and my grandparents, you know, that they, my granny asked me, she said, I want to put you in guitar lessons, and I was just like, yeah, I'll do guitar lessons, because Papa played in church, and everybody, you know, thought my Papa was awesome, man, he, you know, and that's where, uh, that's just where I got the background. All those little things, man, they they add up and they make you who you are. And I guess in music, it's just made who I am because, you know, I've had every little bit of talking to people and being there for me that's put, like, their touch into me. So it's helped mold me into to what I am as an artist and songwriter and stuff like that. So. That's cool. That's cool. Cause you got a good story. You do have a good story. I mean, you know, like, you you know, I know a lot of the same people you do. Mm-hmm. And, and, and in our industry, that works against us sometimes mm-hmm. because uh, they know about people falling off the bar at 4 o'clock in the morning yeah. and, you know, All and, and have stories. videos that they could share but didn't. Yeah. 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 You know, I, you know, I could have got it's, you today. You know uh, that, right? Yeah. But, and I... <laughs> Honestly, I tried. I really did. I told you. (laughs) (laughs) I was digging for dirt, and you know, you actually. I mean, again, I I mean, you showed up early, like so. I I can't. I I gotta leave you alone. I said, I think I may be a few after two. I don't know if you got that text. Yeah, I did. I did. I couldn't respond because of the wonderful before two. Yeah, it was. All right, so let's bring the let's bring the spirit, the tempo. Um, What's the happiest song you got? What is the biggest attaboy you got out there? What is that? Or what was your next song? I mean, I'm, I'm, I told I you know. I was going to let you do whatever you wanted to, and here I've been when, like, talk about sad stuff and play some sad songs and stuff. It kind of got me a... I play, like, a ballad song. Yeah? How was that? Is that... Yeah, a ballad. Ooh. Well, wow. Celine Dion's going to be I guess, pissed. I, I guess you'd call it a ballad. I don't know. I don't know <laughs> We're about to find out. Yeah. But it's called Living for a Living. Um, I had this idea. We're talking with my half-brothers and, and stuff. And one of, one of my brothers, he said, he's like, man, 
he's like he was talking about the other one and he said you know what he just he just out here just living for a living man you know and it's just like he's done it you know he's done his work and stuff and he's helped himself out big time to get where he's where yeah. he's at man yeah and uh now he's just living for a living, you know, no matter what he's doing. That's man. what life's about, though. We should. And I was like, man, that's living for a living. Like, that's kind of, that's crazy. I was like, you just told me a song title because a lot of people, you know, always you want to ask when you're talking to somebody you brand new meet, you know, within the first minute and a half or something, you know, or you work or something. You want to mention something about work and we all yeah. do something for a living. We do. Know? But living for a living is what we got to do. And this is when I was living for a living. Wrote this song with Crystal Ball and Lynn Hutton. Five dollars a week To take out the trash And do them dishes in the sink Mama paid in cash And I blew it at the store down the street Big league chew and candy cigarettes No bills to pay Just twenty-eight dollars That I knew I had to save for a license of fish with daddy on Teleco Lake In those are the days I'll never forget Living for a living I was more than getting by on the good life the good Lord was giving Only time I had to be on time Was for supper in the kitchen When the small mouth was hitting only thing I ever made remembers but man I made a killing Living for a living Forty dollars a day On the weekend for cutting the field and hauling some hay I'd buy a six pack, put gas in a Chevrolet Take my first love on a day Just living for a living I was more than getting by on the good life The good Lord was giving Only time I had to be on town Was a porch like kissing Before midnight was hitting Only thing I ever made were memories But man, I made a killing Living for a living in a hurry and the world just turned so slow I had more time than money but man I had plenty of both living for a living I was more than getting by on the good life the good Lord was giving only time I had to be on time was for supper in the kitchen when the small mouth were hitting only thing I ever made were memories, but man, I made a killing. And you just can't put a price on that kind of feeling. Living for a living. Living for a living. Shoreline Maintenance, we're a family-owned business with over 20 years of experience. Our goal is to customize each dock to the customer's needs at the best price on the lake. We service Blunt County, Knox County, Loudoun, and Monroe. Driving piles, turnkey docks, boat and jet ski lifts, riprap, walkways and stairs, electricity, resurfacing docks, total reconstruction. Our docks are constructed in the highest quality in pre-treated materials from the piles to the lifts on turnkey docks. Call my daddy or papa. Today. Call Shoreline Maintenance today, 865 206 7907. 865 206 7907. Oh, if you guys like to travel, then hop in your car and head on over to Greenback, Tennessee and go travel back in time. The Greenback Diner has been around for almost a 100 years with the best sweet tea around. Don't 
forget the grilled honey bun topped with ice cream and chocolate syrup. They have some friendly service and a family atmosphere. Thursday suppers are from 5 till 8. Breakfast is served from 7.30 until 10.30. Lunch is 10.30 until 2. And on Saturdays, you can stuff yourself on all-you-can-eat breakfast bar from 7.30 until 11. They have the best burgers and best fillies in town. Call them now. Make sure they're there for you no matter where you're coming from. 865-856-2614. That's 865-856-2614. Or find the Greenback Diner on Facebook. We've been catering to it and figuring it out since 1972. So join us at obnoxiousbehavior.com. The merchandise from all of the talent on our shows and the guests on our shows and all of the stuff from our sponsors, from Spoons and Shakers, the Americana Sunday Cafe, as well right here on Taz the Podcast. We've been catering to it and figuring it out since 1972. All you have to do is click Obnoxious Behavior com and fill your obnoxious behaviors. You're down with the OXB. Have you heard? Heard what? Comedy Couple Tees will print anything on a shirt. Anything? Anything. What if I can't think of something funny to put on a shirt? That's okay. They have lots of funny shirts on their website to choose from, or you can create your own custom shirt. You can also get a custom mask, phone case, mouse pad, and so much more. I bet it's expensive, though, right? No way. You can get a full-color picture printed on a white shirt for only $20. 20 bucks? Yep, they have great prices. Where can I find them? ComedyCoupleTees.com. That's ComedyCoupleTees.com. Comedy Couple Tees. We print anything on a shirt. Hi, I'm Jennifer Jones, creator of Twisty Knot, the little fashion accessory that easily creates the perfect knot in your t-shirts. Check out my podcast episode with Taz from season one to hear my story about how I invented and patented my product. And please visit twistyknot.com to see easy tutorials of all the ways that you can use Twisty Knot. That's twist dash t double e knot dot com. Use code podcast and get 10% off your order. Taz the Podcast. So, Jono, listen, uh, I mean, like, seriously, I'm glad um, for nothing else. I'm just glad that we took the opportunity to sit down and talk a little bit because, you know, I got a new little, uh, I got to change, a, I got to change a part. You're not just some little country punk from, from, uh, from, uh, from, from, I keep wanting to say Big Gully. I'm from Big Gully. You're not, but, but I'm saying, right I, down the road. yeah, like right down the road. But, you know, I, you know, I've, I've got a whole new uh, understanding for you now. I mean, you're, you seem to be headed in a right path and, and I like it. And, and, you know, and I've heard people talk about your songwriting and, and stuff that's going you know they like what you're doing yeah, um, heck yeah yeah they like it a lot so um you know i guess you, you've been doing this for a while you, you know i guess there's not much um time for you to have but uh, regrets but I'll, i hate regrets i hate the word regret you should never have a regret it should be a lesson and a life lesson or whatever yeah. but what is in your career as you've been moving forward is there something that you could classify as a regret I think you said it right before you said regrets. Time. Yeah. You know, wish I had more time to, uh, to spend with people, I yeah. guess you'd say. That's yeah. a, the reason I'm, I am where I am is because I spent those memories and made those memories and, and did, you know, and I take that. And then sometimes when you're just sitting in a, a townhouse in Nashville and you're just, you know, there's only so much you can write about. You know, you got to get out there and you got to take stuff in. You got to look at real life, other people's perspectives and, you know, I've always been a guy that I have something on my chest or something, you know. If you walk in walk into a room and you know, you talk about five guys in a situation, matter it be like a relationship or something like that, you're just like, Yeah, man, you know, and they say this opinion and this opinion and if you can get together and write a song that ties all those back in, it it would, but uh I regret not having a, a lot of time not using it managed it right you know i'd go back and do some things different obviously that's a regret thing but the time i really really regret on time yeah. for sure you know yeah. seeing people going back man and seeing them get older you know and it, it's a it's a thing that sticks with you you're just like i see them like this and i've always seen them like this and now it's you got to look at it as 
I'm getting older too. You know, we all. I was about are. to say they, you need to start watching those hairs day on day. your chest. They'll yeah. start turning gray soon. <laughs> I know, right? I'm trying to run from that, man, but it's just like it's crazy to see how it goes by. People have kids and get married, and you, they stop talking to you. Like you just That's everything true. changes, it and does. it's just like nobody's mad at nobody. It's just time and life. You know? Yeah. I mean, on paper, I've been single all my life. So, like, you know, it gets pretty lonely in my world, too, is that, you know, as you get older, it gets worse. Like, yeah. it doesn't get any better. You think, oh, yeah, we'll all be old sitting around. Mm-mm, we don't. <laughs> yeah. So, for you, That's like, true. you got a lot of good things coming up. You're, you're building a road for yourself and you're, you're, you're driving down the highway, if you will. Um, so what's next for you? Like, I mean, I understand you're still gonna, um, you're still going to do the things you're doing in Nashville, and we yeah. talked about that already. But, but what is the next level for you? Like, where where is it that you go next, and and what is it that you do next? So I think, um, you know, I wonder about that all all the time. Every, every time I wake up, you know, go to sleep. Uh, and right now, it's uh, it's getting my feet up and under me, and uh, stability. I guess you would say. I've uh, learned you can only run so hard. You can only do so much. You mm-hmm. can only be at so many parties at one night <laughs> you know you can only do so many things so you have to grow up and realize how to balance it all out and yeah, uh, God. I mean, you yeah. Gotta, calm down kurt cobain yeah, calm it's down a, it's a no i'm just messing around it's, yeah, it's just like a juggle uh a juggle with everything you know um but I, I think the next move for me is um i made some great connections the next move is is getting the music out and with that being if I go do 15 songs in a studio, you know, that's going to be a $20,000 project right mm-hmm. there if I do that. Pretty much, I guess, once everything's said and done by the time, you know. But it's, uh, if I have to go with just me and an acoustic guitar, you know, I've been just perfecting my craft. That's, that's the things I've been, when I got to Nashville, I realized, all right, well, this is the speed I need to be on. I right. get on that speed, but how am I going to be different? How am I going to do this? How am I going to make this craft? Your identity. You got to build your yeah. identity. Yeah. You know, and how am I going to do that? That's going to be, separate from others because there's so many good artists yeah, i mean there's yeah. so many in maryville right now dude within a fit within 25 miles of this place there's all kinds of great guys you there's know? talent yeah. it's just it's who you are as a person i think bigger you know and i've tried like maybe i need to sit behind the lines and being a songwriter and kind of do that and i'm always going to write songs even with other people and with their lives because i just think it's cool to connect like that but yeah it is um you know i want to be an artist of showing people where i come from you know, I'm really proud of where I come from, and it's just like there was nothing about it. If I turned out any different way, if any other lane would have changed, I wouldn't be doing. I wouldn't be sitting here with you on this awesome podcast, man, and sitting here on Teleco Lake. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I like so. you said, awesome podcast and not awesome lake. Like I love <laughs> well, it that. Is that, a, that I, we're fighting a rain cloud right now, but. I'm not too scared. I think we've, I think we've fought bigger things before. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I that's think right. we have. Well, you know, listen, you know, you, you changed my mind about you and not that I had a bad, you know, I'm, I'm a judgmental, I'm a judgmental <laughs> asshole anyway, but you know, I, you know, I, you changed my mind about you. I think you're on your way to something and, and my, you know, just like I tell every other artist, you know, I promise you that this podcast will not make or break you, but I'm glad that you allowed me to be able to tell your story and, and, uh, and I hope to have you back. Uh, the format of Taz, the podcast is changing and, um, We'll have a platform for you to come on quite frequently if, if, if yeah. that's something you want to do. Absolutely. Yeah, especially right here. I mean, this is, you know, I'm glad we're down here. Know so You know, for a good reason, we know a lot of the same people, mm-hmm. you know, and we can uh, – that's a special thing, man, when it comes from right down the road. You know, well, yeah, different. and I can't wait till I get, uh, you know, there's a possibility that, that this show may be going to Broadway, but it, the Broadway awesome. in Maryville. Maryville, yeah. not Nashville, but, but, uh, Heck we will yeah. be making some trips over there, and hopefully when you get in some of these showcases and stuff, we can come over and catch Maryville's you over there. build up. I mean, that, and there's a lot of things that, you know, there's different reasons happen in everybody's life, but there, there's so many people in East Tennessee, I've said for a long time, that just, you know, they're so incredibly talented that it's it's just like something's in the water down here or something like that and you see it so many different uh, you know there's a lot of guys come from georgia you know different stuff like that but east tennessee is a very special place oh baby the birthplace of country music's in bristol and you know that stuff yep, just like the true. grass infected and the bug spray we use it rolls downhill makes its way to the ocean the talent starts here and rolls it itself rolls all the way down because i mean <laughs> it started right there in bristol tennessee That's you right. know and uh, i mean we do live in a magical place and it took me going away for seven years um in an rv living in a cracker box on wheel to be able to, um, ooh, I about lost it there for a second. Come back and appreciate this place yeah. so much more. Well, and, man, if you wouldn't have went out there, and that's what I always say, man. It's like one of the things that 
it was the funnest time you never want to do it again or something. Yeah, it's so fun. I never want to do it again. I learned a lot. I burned a lot. And, yeah. uh, and that's Bridges. But, uh, you know, <laughs> that's really yeah, good. yeah, and that's Bridges. But, uh, I really appreciate yes, you taking the time out of your, uh, recuperating Sunday and, uh, oh, coming absolutely. and be able to help us understand John O, who John O Clayton is and John O's music. And, um, I look forward to seeing what, what, uh, and, and now listen, once you're on the show, I stalk you. You can ask your buddy Cooper. Like, I don't let you go. Like, I mean, you're one of mine at that yep. point, and I enjoy my dog just about took your headphones off. <laughs> That's funny. Man, a lot of people don't realize it, but, uh, you know, you doing stuff like this. There's, I've, I've done a, a few podcasts, um, and a few interviews and stuff like that, but when you, when you really, you know, have somebody like you, man, they don't realize how much it helps. You know, I've seen just some, some guys that started that, you know, I was able to get in contact with in Nashville that, you know, one of the main guys has come down. I'm not going to say any names, but he's come down from where he was, his job he had. You know, he's stuck and now he's living in Nashville. Yeah, he's making less money, you know, and he's just getting by, but he's built something so big mm-hmm. that's when he put me out on his content. It helped me get so many other connections and right. gain networking things, and it's. Just, I mean, that's that's how it goes. Man. Well, that's why yeah. I, I do what I do. So people, I do what I do, but it was a by mistake that I do what I do, and I find out that I actually love it. And now I love standing on stage with a microphone. I love sitting here on the side of the lake with a microphone. Just give me a microphone when I die. I'll <laughs> I will speak my way to heaven. Just give me a microphone. Uh, so I, I do really appreciate the opportunity. And guys, um, John O, uh, how can people? You're actually Jonathan Clayton. Do, yeah, you, John, do you yeah. professionally go by John O, or are you? Yeah, John. John I know Clayton is stuck with me from Greenback Baseball. Yeah, so there we'll you go. And, and people can find you. How can they find you? Uh, Instagram, uh, it's Jono underscore Clayton. And uh, Twitter, it's Clayton underscore Jono. It's backwards. So they wouldn't give me the thing. But And Facebook, Jono Clayton. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty Clayton. much on there. and going to be uh, actually, I guess, uh, here in a few, I'm going to be doing some videos to put down. On put get get out get out on YouTube and stuff like that. So YouTube also. Well, you, we are going to have you back. We don't know when it's going to be, but I know I got something special coming up with you and a couple of your buddies that I want to do. So I know we're going to have yeah. you back. So, um, and ladies. Go look him up. If you liked Cooper, you're gonna like Jono. So you got oh, okay, you a new one to be. I got you a new one to be smitten over, ladies. <laughs> Don't worry, Jono. They're 45 and up. They won't hurt you. Okay, it's fine. Okay. Their husbands will kick their ass. <laughs> <laughs> it's a true story. That's the turnaround right there, man. I like that. Yeah, it's, a fr- it's the friends of my heart, the love of my mind, that God blesses my soul so that I can make life happen. And I hope that you guys continue to do it to support these folks that continue to entertain, make us laugh, and make us feel all for a better life. I'm Taz Cable. Taz the Podcast.